In 1998, Bruce Willis saved the world from an asteroid. Harrison Ford was voted the hottest man alive. But I can do this. And Bill Clinton shagged Monica Lewinsky. I did not have relations with that woman. Oh, also Fallout 2 came out. This is the one we're going to focus on. Wow. Fallout 2 is a game about a bunch of things that I cannot talk about in the first minute of this video. Since the Fallout 1 vid got a fair amount of views, I've gotten hundreds of comments asking for Fallout 2. If you haven't seen that video, you should probably watch it, I'll like link it or something. It's not needed, but I make a ton of references to it in this video. But anyways, this video is way too long, so let's make this intro really short. Fallout 2 is an RPG where we roleplay as a Native American on our journey to destroy the remnants of the American government. So yeah, now that all the kids should be gone because this is a very boring video, it's time that we talk about Raid Shadow Legends, baby! Yeah, it's already in your brain, so even if you skip now, you're gonna be thinking about Raid. First, I need to talk about the Valentine's event because there's not too much time left. It ends on March 14th. So it's really important that you hurry up and find love with Raid using this special promo code. I spent my Valentine's Day with Raid and now me and my wife are fighting more often. But that's fine because I have Rock Tooth. Raid is turning four years old in March, which of course means tons of dedicated offers, free gifts, promo codes, events, and a brand new fusion event. Also, Amazon Prime members will get some sick, savage gear in the next drop. But what is Raid Shadow Legends? Raid stands for Really Awesome Insane Doom Tower. Yeah, there's a Doom Tower you can climb. Uh, well, I can't, because I'm not level 40 yet, but I will climb this tower one day. And all of this is completely free, which is probably why more people have downloaded it than currently live in Thailand. 80 million, that's a big number. My favorite feature is autoplay because my well-assembled team can fight enemies for me while I explain to my boss why he shouldn't fire me for playing Raid Shadow Legends at work. PvP, PvE, PvS, it's got it all. So make sure you take advantage of the real-life prizes, including Valentine's Day-themed Raid Champions and even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000, real money by the way, for the Valentine's Day event. And don't miss out on all the content being released for the game's birthday between March 2nd and March 30th. If you're a new player, you can use this QR code to get a free starter pack that has all this cool stuff in it. Use this QR code. This is not a suggestion, this is a demand. All right. Ads done, let's look at Fallout 2. As is tradition, the game begins with character creation. But this time, the pre-made characters have faces. It's kind of creepy. In Fallout 1, our character's name was None, and overall their stats were pretty well-rounded. So to shake things up, we again made our character well-rounded. This game is hard, I'm not ready to min-max. Except this time, I'm a woman. I'm a hot girl. And my name is Nun2. And I look like Olivia Wilde. But I'm not actually Olivia Wilde. That'd be crazy. My character is pretty much April from Parks and Rec. I'm going to murder you a thousand times. Except I love stealing. And also, I'm like a huge whore. But we'll get there soon. In Fallout 1, we were known as the Vault Dweller, which is a little underwhelming. In Fallout 2, we are known as the Chosen One. I am the chosen one, so I'm taking on China. Mostly because we come from a super religious tribe. Uh, but this is perfect though, because I can't be the only one who thinks that Nun 2 actually sounds like a tribal name. Right? I gotta be right. The game begins with this old bag of bones telling us that our village is dying. Dying Brahmin. Sick children. Yeah, these kids don't look sick. They look dead already. To fix our village, we need to once again find an important item that can only be found in a vault. Hmm, feels like I've been here before. Except this time, it's not a water chip. It's something called a gek, or Garden of Eden Creation Kit. Garden of Eden Creation Kit. Maybe you should have spent a little more time on naming it, you know, so you had a better an acronym than gek. But this Gek is able to magically transform a barren wasteland into a paradise. They never explain how it works, so we just have to go with it. After this cutscene, we're thrown out in front of some sort of ancient looking temple. And even though we're proclaimed to be the chosen one, we still need to go through something called the Temple of Trials. 
It kind of serves as a tutorial if tutorials didn't at all tell you how to play the game and instead just kind of force you to suffer. I think this is probably one of the most difficult parts of the game. In Fallout 1, none was kind of beefy and could hold their own toward the start of the game. However, now that I'm a sneaky little skank lady, I was getting my ass kicked. And much like the first game, I died a bunch right off the bat by getting stung in the face by rad scorpions. My name is Tony and I hate scorpions. This is a little too much deja vu for me. But it wasn't my character build that was wrong. It was how I was playing the game. I would just walk up to things and stab them and then just move on. But this is not how my character is built. So once I discovered the innovative strategy that is kiting, we weren't losing health anymore. Instead, we're just losing time. It took me about two hours to get through this because I have the accuracy of a blind sloth. I would literally miss 10 attacks in a row. This is ridiculous. You keep fighting through the temple until you reach this door that you can't lockpick. Eventually, after clicking on almost everything in this godforsaken level, I found an explosive in this pot, which I could then use to blow through the door. At the very end of this temple stands a shirtless man. He tells us that to beat this trial, we have to defeat him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I don't know why he's so jacked up to fight a woman, but here we are. Yeah, he kicked the shit out of me, like multiple times. You have died. I tried kiting him, and that didn't work, and he still ended up just punching me in the face a bunch. But this is a Fallout game. Surely there's another way around this obstacle. Yeah, all I had to do was pickpocket him to get the key to open the door. After opening the door, I tried to pull out my spear and finally kill this guy. I still lost. That's fine. This is okay. After getting through this door, we get a short cutscene showing us some weird effigy of a vault dweller suit, and we get plopped into the middle of the village named Arroyo. Arroyo is our home, and we need to find the Gek in order to save it. And now that we beat the Temple of Trials, the Elder gives us money and sends us off on our journey to find a Gek. I cannot help much. To do this, we need to make contact with a man named Vic, because he has information on where we can find Vault City. But before we go, we get to say goodbye to all of our friends, which amounts to us just fixing all of their problems. Why do I have so many problems in life? We find a lost dog. I was hoping this guy would just like change his mind and be like, yeah, you can have my dog now that you found it. He doesn't do that. Which is a shame, because this dog could have definitely died a noble death much like our last playthrough. Also, the village shaman Hakunin, or however you say this, has us fight off some sentient plants. This took far too long, but luckily he could heal us over and over again until we were done weeding his garden. You know, I don't really like anyone here. If this guy is the coolest guy in the village, your village sucks, because this guy says some weird shit. May your aura grace my presence when the earth breathes clean again. So yeah, I do look forward to getting radicalized by the wasteland and forgetting that all these people even existed. So after we make sure to steal everything we can from everyone in the village, we set out to the only location we have marked on our map. Klamath isn't a full-on city, but it's bigger than our little village. And I quickly found out that everyone is racist towards tribes people. Hell, even the kids hate me, and I really don't know what I did to piss them off. Immediately upon entering Klamath, we help this idiot, named after a dark web search engine. I'm not a smart man. And I'm not being rude, this guy is as dumb as they come. We kill some rad scorpions for him and he repays us with nothing because he's dumb and poor, literally the worst. But that's fine because our next goal is to steal everything. So we're not dumb and poor. This will be our strategy for the whole game. And because of this, I'm pretty sure I quick saved a few thousand times during this playthrough. If you fail at pickpocketing, everybody will become hostile. Well, I must be doing something right to garner this much attention. However, if you save beforehand and reload every time you fail, you're able to rob entire towns blind of everything in their pockets. And since I wasn't sure if I could get rich by being a gambling addict like I did in the first game, I made sure to steal a lot. A whole lot. Everybody I saw, I stole from. And thank God I'm such a piece of shit, because it turns out I can buy a person now. We and I know many things. Travel from great salt water to home of biting lizards. Solik. Like us, he's also a tribes person and is working in this town in order to pay off his debt, because he got drunk and made a mess or something. He costs like 300 something caps, or wait, money? Wait, why is it called money? It's, it's 
Fallout. This should be Caps. That's bullshit. Regardless, I'm just gonna call it Caps. I don't know why they made that change. And with a quick transaction, Sulik now belongs to us. But he's not like a slave or anything. I mean, yeah, we're his owner, but he's like free to go, but he won't go because we own him. It's complicated, don't worry about it, because I'm not a slave owner. Sulik is a pretty cool guy. He shoved a bone from his dead grandpa through his septum, and now he believes he can talk to his dead relatives. Not just grampy bone, all tribe spirits. 10 out of 10, love this guy. I did every mission I could in this town, except one where we had to kill a bunch of geckos, because that shit was way too hard right now. We find Vic's house, but we don't find Vic. And of course, yeah, I stole everything from his home. Talking to the townspeople of Klamath, we find out that Vic went to the Den, a shady settlement to the south full of degenerates, which is good, because yeah, we're probably gonna fit right in. The Den is a filthy place. Who would have guessed that a place named The Den would have been scummy? The first thing I noticed was the glorious gambling table. Oh, how I've missed this. So just like the first game, it's time to get rich or lose all of our money. What the f This isn't the same menu as before. And because it's not the same menu, it means that I can't spam it by holding down two number keys at the same time. And even worse, I'm losing. Yeah. Gambling isn't gonna be the cheat code that it was in the first game. It looks like we're gonna have to make our money the good old fashioned way, by stealing. Cause it's fun, it's fun to do bad things. But I'm not the only thief in town, cause these little bastards would try to pickpocket me as I walked by them. Kids suck. And to settle this dispute, I shot them. Yeah, I know, but don't even bring it up. I don't wanna hear it. It's good to know that Sulik is like a true ride or die. He didn't even take a second to think about it before he stabbed them, which maybe that's not a good thing, you know? Maybe this guy's like kind of a psychopath. There's a whole lot more going on here at the den than in the last town. Our first priority is finding Vic so we can get our Gek. And it turns out he's being held captive by a slave trader named Metzger. And he refuses to let him go until he fixes his walkie talkie. Luckily, I raided Vic's home back in Klamath. Klamath? I forget how I was saying it. But I already have the radio he needs. And after giving it to Vic, we're able to set him free by once again, purchasing him. For a thousand caps? That's too much. But luckily, I'm a dirty little whore. So I banged Metzger and I got 500 caps off of Vic's slave price. And since I've robbed every person in two separate towns now, it's super easy to buy him. Wow, I'm like three hours into this game and I've already bought two human beings. Uh, again, I'm not a slave owner though. But more importantly, I now have an unquenchable thirst for dick. So much so that I ended up banging a random drug addict. I didn't get anything for doing this either. I guess I just love having loose sex with dirty people. One of the things I like doing most is banging whores. Outside of this escapade, I practiced a little espionage and I started a gang fight. Good times. But now that we have Vic, we can go to Vault City. Uh, never mind. we're gonna stop in this dumpy little town called Modoc because it's on the way. This place is lame. The most interesting part of this city is a quest from a guy named Balthus, who lost his son, Johnny. Quite the separation between those two names. If you go down into a well in the center of town, you can find Johnny's BB gun, which we can now sell back to his dad for 300 caps. And after doing so, he gives us the family dog, which, yeah, sweet deal. So it turns out Johnny was taken by a nearby group of underground mole people named the Slayer. Slags. And to make up for what happened in the last city, I knew we needed to kill the slags and take Johnny home. So that's what we did. Dude, this kid's dog is a monster. It was eating people who were just like trying to run away. I wouldn't want this dog anywhere near my family. Jesus. Taking out the slags was a super tough battle that took a very long time to finish. But after we killed all these cave people, we can free Johnny. Except I don't know which one he is. They're all freaking out and this is chaos. Why is there so many kids here? Throughout the years, at least 20 kids don't approach me talking about I'm their father. I decided to leave the area and come back. And now all of those kids have disappeared. Yeah, WTF, right? And because of this, I couldn't complete the mission. I ended up resetting and choosing a diplomatic solution by getting the Slags and Modoc to work together. Johnny gets home safe, the Slags win, Modoc wins, everyone claps, yay. 
happy ending. But honestly, I like the first method of solving the issue more. Anyways, that's enough of this place. Let's go to Vault City. Finally, a vault, except we can't get in. To access the vault, we need to be a citizen of Vault City. We were able to get a day pass easy enough. I've been dumping so many points in my speech skill that I can pass most speech checks at this point. So I just made some shit up about vaults and they gave me a free all access pass. Idiots. Vault City's pretty cool, but the best part of it isn't even within the city gates. There's a camp outside of the gates with a bar and a general store named Happy Harry's. At the bar, we're able to convince the bartender to just quit his job and come do crime with us. Let's go commit tax fraud. And at Happy Harry's, we're able to pickpocket Harry out of thousands of dollars worth of gear. And we use all this to outfit the newly expanded team's armor and weapons. We're growing stronger. But now we need to become a citizen in a vault city so we can keep the story going. There's actually not much we need to do here, but there is a lot to do just a short trip north of here at a settlement named Gecko. So basically the leader of Vault City is a total bitch and wants us to go and kill all the ghouls that inhabit this town. Those things are operating a damaged atomic power plant. <laughs> yeah, I know, super racist, right? But we're not gonna do that. Instead, we're going to buddy up with this guy, McClure. You see, there's a power plant in Gecko that's leaking radiation. This is why this lady wants them dead. However, we can fix the power plant and even optimize it to send some of the power down to Vault City. Plus, I don't have to sit through an hour straight of just combat. Having to kill all these things would take a lot of time. This pisses off head councilwoman Lynette, but that again doesn't matter because McClure already made us a citizen. What? He did? And inside Vault City's vault, we finally find the water chip, the thing we've been searching for all of the first game. This is what we needed to find in the first game, not this game, totally different games. And it sucks we didn't know about this place because they have boxes and boxes full of these. They could have just given us like a dozen. However, they don't have a geck and none of the terminals give me information on where the other vaults are. So I guess the only thing left to do now is head over to New Reno, a city that somebody here is marked on our map for us. And New Reno is far. It's especially far because I don't know if they buffed the encounters in this game or what, but it feels like I can't go a square or two without having to stop just to fight a bunch of bullshit or desolate farmers or whatever I have to kill to get to where I'm going. Leave me the f alone, please stop, stop. Before leaving, I straightened out everyone's inventory and that's when I see it, a fuel cell controller. I forget how I get it exactly, but I do remember hearing about this when I talked to a guy named Smitty at the den. This is huge because this part and a couple of caps gets us access to a car. Yeah, a car in a Fallout game. Just again, don't question it. And holy nuts, does this change the game. I'm so happy. And finally, we can get from A to B without having to fight a small army of raiders or geckos or whatever. Which, by the way, what's with the word gecko in this game? We have to fight geckos all the time. There's a large city that's important to the story named Gecko, and we're looking for a geck. Oh. I don't know. I just think it's strange, but let's move past it because now that we have a car, we're able to head all the way down to New Reno in style. This place is wild. It's like a full on city and it's full on hedonism. There's casinos, drugstores, and even um, a movie studio. And I became a sort of movie star. Make sure you kiss me good with those big lips. Or I guess more like a producer. I got $5 per job and this was a great gig because I ended up walking away with over 300 something caps. I knew being a whore would pay off eventually. They all laughed at me in high school, but they're a bunch of fucking idiots now. After all of this hard back-breaking work, I got into a boxing match. Everyone has a great plan until they get punched in the face. It's very true. I'm not sure what happened here. It seems like the game glitched or something, but I don't care. I won the fight. And wow, what a hell of a day. Let me just go drop a few things off at my car and where the f*** is my car? At first glance, I thought this was a glitch. It's not until we go to the spot where our car used to be that we can get the ability to follow the tracks. And this leads us to this garage. We talk to the guy in the back room and it ends in a fight. So let's reset. 
and we talk to the guy in the back room and it ends in a fight. Okay, reset. And, oh Jesus, we're fighting again. These boys really fighting out here. This took more than just a couple resets, but finally I passed a speech check and was able to resolve this peacefully by just having him give me the car back. The reason I try to resolve this peacefully is because New Reno is divided up by multiple crime families. Two of them own big casinos, one of them owns a swanky upscale bar, and the last is just kind of poor and makes alcohol that the other three buy and sell. I didn't have any luck working with the big casinos because they just didn't like me, I guess. But I did end up doing a few missions for a crime boss named Salvatore. Salvatore. I don't know. He wasn't talking head, so I don't know how you say his name. He's the guy who owns the nice upscale bar. He made me force a thief to pretty much dig his own grave in order to get back some money that he owed him. This all seems a little familiar. The game was rigged from the start. After this, I took the opportunity to rob a bunch of graves and found a cool pair of sunglasses. These will come in handy later. The last mission Salvatore gives us is guarding a drug deal with the Enclave. The Enclave is the evil faction in this game, aka the American government. It is what it is. But despite this, this mission was super easy. I just stood there and I got paid for it. But what I didn't realize was that completing this mission turned me into a quote, made man meaning I was high up in this crime family. And that's cool and all, but now I'm pretty much blacklisted from all other establishments in New Reno. So no more casinos and no more alcohol, unless I buy it here. However, I'm still free to pick up shifts at the Golden Globes, helping um, produce movies. But since I can't work with the other families, I think I'm just kind of done with New Reno. From everything I've heard, we need to head south to the NCR. But before that, I need to rob everyone in a settlement east of New Reno. Breaking Hills is a another little shit town. I showed up, saved their mining operation, gave a ghoul an adult magazine and a blow-up doll. I got beat by a rad scorpion in chess. Yeah, no, that actually happened. But after replanting an intelligent plant, the plant told me how to beat that rad scorpion in chess. Again, I'm not on drugs, this all really happened. And unfortunately, the Rad Scorpion is a sore loser and tries to attack me after beating it. Bad idea. And now the scientist that created Mentance... Mentance? You know, I've never actually really had to say that word out loud. But he won't even talk to me because I killed his precious Rad Scorpion. But none of this matters because the leader of the town, Marcus, is a super mutant with a badass gun. And we can add him as a companion. You want me to come along with you? if your charisma is high enough. The way companions work in this game is you're only allowed to have as many as half of your charisma score. Eight charisma, four companions, six charisma, three companions, you get it. And I was one point short, and because of this, Marcus didn't want to join because I wasn't cool enough. But maybe a little bit of cool sunglasses will change his mind. Yeah, the mirrored sunglasses that I uh, grave robbed earlier give us plus one charisma. So now that Marcus saw how cool I was with my shades, he joined the crew. I'll just stay here and tighten the vices on my shoulder. This problem of having a high charisma skill for companions is going to lead to a crippling drug addiction later. But for now, we're just a cool chick with some nice shades. And having Marcus on our team is great. He's super OP, and he straight up melts the low-level enemies we've been fighting. But yeah, not much else happening here in Broken Hills. So the whole gang piled back in the car, and we headed to one of the most southern points on the map, the NCR. Also, this guy keeps invading my dreams to tell me my friends are dying. Once again, my spirit touches you from the void. Or whatever. Worried that there's a time limit like there is in the first game, I googled it, but it looks like we have 13 years to beat the game. So he can kiss my ass. I have plenty of time. Um. If you watched the first video, then this place may seem a little familiar. It's Shady Sands. Shady Nasties? And Tandy, a talking head from the first game, is now president of this powerful faction. This is perfect, because I know that Shady Sands is in the middle of two vaults, Vault 13 and Vault 15. Except now, Vault 15 is controlled by raiders, and Vault 13 just doesn't even show up on the map. I guess somebody has to tell us where it is first. But I was able to find the remains of Mariposa, the endgame military base from Fallout 1. So we can't really cheese this, and we need to talk to somebody to figure out where Vault 13 is. 
The big goal here is to ease tensions with the NCR and the Vault 15 squatters. There might have been a diplomatic solution here, but like the thing is, is I just got a new companion and I kind of want to test out all of the new cool guns and armor we got. So instead of just getting everybody to work together like we did last time, we just went to Vault 15 and killed everybody. Yeah. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Oh. And it wasn't hard. Because I'm a sexy lady with even sexier sunglasses, I now have a large team of murderers who will straight up die for me. Simps. Vault 15 doesn't have a geck though, but at least it doesn't have raiders now either. So we head back to the NCR and deliver the good news. You know, you'd think like having a car would stop random encounters since we can just, you know, drive right by them. But no, that's not how it works. I'm pretty sure I end up killing more dogs in this game than I did the first game. Yeah, seriously. Almost every other encounter I got is just a pack of dogs. Why are you making me do this? But once we get back to the NCR, we kill a bunch of slavers camped outside the town, which is good karma for me. Because even though I own two slaves myself, I mean, no I don't, I, I don't, because slavery is wrong. Outside of that, I also talked some guy out of blowing himself up. On the second try. The first try was a little bit more messy. But after talking to nearly everyone in this town, it seemed that nobody could tell me where Vault 13 is, even though everybody knew where Vault 15 was. And then it occurred to me, I never checked the computers at Vault 15 like I did at Vault City. So after a quick drive back to Vault 15, we finally get the location of Vault 13. It's funny how nonchalant the computer is about this. It tells you, other than the location of Vault 13, um, the most important location in the game. This computer contains no useful information. LOL, what? But now that we have it, we can head back to Vault 13. And everything looks the same as it did in the first game, as I got flashbacks of being eaten alive by rats 10 minutes into my epic adventure. However, once we get inside, everything's different. I was not expecting to be greeted by a sentient deathclaw, Gruther. But honestly, he's a pretty chill guy. And of course, they have a problem here. Despite being smart deathclaws, for evolutionary reasons, kind of struggle to use computers, for the same reason as some humans. I'm finally answering the question I get asked the most. How I wipe my ass with these long ass nails? Their claws are too big. So in order to use the vault's computer, they rely on text-to-speech. But unfortunately, the voice module for their mainframe burnt out. Oh god, here I go searching across the map for another stupid f***ing computer part. Oh, never mind. I already have it in my inventory. I had to look back at the footage I recorded, but I guess I picked it up at Vault City when I raided their entire vault. And once again, crime pays every single time. We install the chip for them, and as a reward, Gruther gives us a briefcase. Cool, man, what the hell am I supposed- Oh, it says Gek on it. Oh yeah, that's the Gek thing that we need. Yeah, no, they never told me what it actually looks like, so I wasn't sure what this object was at first glance. But cool, I guess the game's over. Let's go save a village. Chosen, the shadow of darkness arrived before you. Oh no, I guess we're too late and everyone got abducted by the Enclave. Wow, what a surprising twist. That was definitely not used in the first game. Yeah, Pekunin is the only one left and he tells us that the Enclave stormed the settlement and shipped everyone off to the ocean, I think? I overheard the Dark Soul speaking. They plan to rest their beasts at a place named Navarro before crossing the great basin of our Earth Mother's tears. I'm not really sure what he's trying to say. This guy's awful at using words. But we're told to check a place called Navarro. And thankfully, they put it on our map because I had so much unexplored room, I wasn't sure how I was going to find it. So just like that, our hopes and dreams are crushed, and now we need to go defeat the American government. Navarro is supposed to be an Enclave military base, but when we get there, all we find is a shitty little gas station, and some guy that keeps telling us there's nothing to see here, and that we should keep heading south to San Francisco. And although I do really want to see San Francisco, I think this guy is full of shit. We can't pickpocket him, and every time we try to access this suspicious looking door, he stops us, and with no other options, we just kill him. And now that we can go through this door, we find ourselves in a large military bunker. 
But yeah, I can't fight these guys. They're way stronger than me. And I still don't even have power armor yet. But the worst part of all of this is I've been dumping points into energy weapons this whole game, thinking it wouldn't be too long until I found a laser pistol or something, right? Yeah, that was a dumbass decision, considering I'm now in the end game and I'm still using a rifle and armor that I found in like the second city. But it was clear this is a fight that I was not going to win. And with another reset, we finally listen to the strange robed man at the gas station and head south to San Francisco. I've been to San Francisco in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, and overall, it looks like they did a good job of capturing the essence of the city. The third thing you gotta watch out for in San Francisco is poop. Our first stop is the Brotherhood of Steel's outpost. Throughout the game, we've been running into these, and each time the soldiers know my name without me telling them, as if they've been watching me. And most recently in the NCR, he told me to visit the San Francisco branch. So I feel like I'm about to get initiated and finally get an energy weapon and some power armor, which is exactly what didn't happen. In order to join, we need to steal vertebrate plans from Navarro, the same military base that just got done kicking our ass. Fantastic. However, he did tell us to go alone and try to convince him that I am a new recruit. Yeah, okay, great idea. Because I already knew taking it by force wasn't an option at this point. So yeah, it's right back up to Navarro. Except this time, we can convince the door guy that we're a recruit. And he gives us the password and tells us where the base is. I feel like an idiot, because the first time we were here, I completely didn't notice this section at the top of the map where we can just walk right up to the front gates of the base. My character might have a high perception, but me as a person is level zero perception. We give the guards the password and we're now part of the Enclave, I guess? Okay, you check out. Report to the drill chief. We get yelled at by our squad commander for not having our gear on, and we just kind of flip that right back at him and tell him the shitty logistics of the Enclave are the reason that we don't have armor. You are out of uniform, soldier! Where is your power armor? This is good, because this gives us access to this back alley locker room, where we finally find not only power armor, but also a plasma rifle. Oh man, I have waited all game for this. But I do gotta say, I like the Brotherhood's power armor more. Sure, the Enclave's armor is better and has better stats, but I just feel like I look like some sort of dumbass bug. I got like a bug face. I don't know, I don't like it. After we gear up, it's once again time to rob everybody. There are so many things in a hotel room that you can steal. As is tradition. While going through this level, we find this evil scientist who just loves torturing animals. Hey, Pavlov! <coughs> After talking to him, he tells us about his robot dog in the corner. I guess his dog was a dick, so he just disabled its legs. So now the dog is forced to just sit in the same spot in a perpetual timeout, watching what's going on in the room. I, this, th that's not a good thing to do, right? Oh, he also wants us to go kill a talking death claw because of course he does. However, after repeatedly confirming with him that his room is soundproof, we just sort of kill him. This guy sucked, and by doing this, we can fix his dog and gain a whole new companion, Robo Dog. And we also just kind of set the death claw free, and we get a bunch of good karma for doing so. Good luck out there, big guy. Try not to eat too many people. And after a bit more snooping around, we find the vertebrate plants, along with a ton of other high-level loot. So it's back to San Francisco. Once we get these plans back to the Brotherhood of Steel Guard, we get access to the outpost and 20,000 XP, which that's a lot, by the way. That's like a whole lot. There's some good loot in the outpost, but I gave it all to my companions because I got enough at Navarro. And I ended up using these lockers as storage since I already have too much money from robbing everyone in like three separate states. The best part of this outpost is this weird looking doctor machine. I've been finding these computer modules during my travels, and it turns out we use these to upgrade our special stats for no money, or caps, sorry. That's like an unspoken rule of Fallout for me. If you find anything that looks like a computer chip, you take it, no questions. So now that we're juiced in both stats and equipment, we're doing good. Let's check out San Francisco. The first thing I noticed is San Francisco has two separate gyms, which is weird. The reason is because they sort of have a yin and yang standoff between two martial artists. 
the evil Lo Pan, and the virtuous man named Dragon, of all things. We can choose to train in hand-to-hand -hand combat with one of these guys and then go fight the other one. Now, I may be a thief and a slut, but I'm still on the side of good. So I trained with the dragon and I challenged Lopan to mortal combat. I thought this would be a tough fight to the death. I one-tapped the guy with a kick to the head. Yo, holy shit, he dead! And he just kind of died. Wow, this is just like the plot of Karate Kid, where Ralph Macchio kills another kid and even gets the girl at the end. Cool movie. But that's not the only thing going on around here. The town is home to some strange religious cult named the Hobologists, whose spokespeople are movie stars. Or I guess they're more like adult movie stars. I used to work with them back in New Reno. But yeah, this is pretty much Scientology, and I'm not a fan. They have a cool rocket ship that they need help getting running, but good luck with that because I'm not gonna help them for shit. Luckily, there's another faction run by a supercomputer called the She. This faction could be all about dressing up like schoolgirls and making out with vegetables. Now, when you gray with your man, he has to be blindfolded. I still wouldn't care. It's better than joining up with a bunch of Scientologists. And the she want me to eliminate the hobologists. Say no more, fam. I got you. Yeah, that's what you get for ruining Tom Cruise, you bunch of fucks. Now, all this genocide and martial art death battles has been fun, but we need to turn our focus to the north part of San Francisco. At the end of this dock is a massive Poseidon Energy tanker. I'm sure we need to fix it up and get it running, but for some reason, the captain won't talk to us. He wants us to help out his friends. So, okay, let's help out the people of the ship. There's this guy who lost his spleen in a card game. Not sure how he managed that, but we tracked it down and even found a doctor to reinstall it for him. Still, the captain doesn't care and won't talk to me. But we do notice this computer behind him that's responsible for running the ship. To get it started, we're gonna need a few things. Fuel to start the engines and a navigational computer to point us in the right direction. When I was spamming computers that I hacked in the She's headquarters, I guess I accidentally already routed fuel to the ship. Good job, previous me. But we still need this navigational chip or whatever. And of course, it's another PC part. And because I don't have it means that it has to be somewhere that I haven't been yet, because like I said earlier, I always grab computer stuff. And since we've been almost everywhere in this game, we head back to one of the places that we really haven't visited, the military base from the first game. Getting back to the military base, it's clearly now in shambles since we blew it up in the first game. It's really stupid how we get in. So we need to put this iron pole on this mine cart and then attach dynamite to the pole on the cart so it can blow up this rocky barrier. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I mean, we could have just put dynamite next to the rocks like you do every other time. But no, that doesn't work and this weird cart pole method makes way more sense. God damn it, how much longer is this game? Anyways, this place still sucks. It's full of super mutants. I end up killing about two dozen mutated assholes here, including this guy that for some reason can spawn death claws at will, jerk. We clear out the whole base and still no computer parts. With little ideas on how to proceed, I realized that I never actually searched Vault 13. I showed up like Best Buy Geek Squad, fixed their PC and got paid, but I never dug around. Plus those death claws were pretty cool. Let's go see what they're up to. Yeah, they're all dead. If we access the Vault 13 mainframe, we see security camera footage showing the Death Claws getting steamrolled by the Enclave, namely this guy. This is not a super mutant, it's way too big, but it's still wearing armor like a normal soldier. I would bet my spleen that this guy is the final boss. Actually, you know what? You never know what's gonna happen. Never mind. I, I don't wanna bet my spleen on anything. This sucks, but at least now I don't feel bad for stealing everything from them since, you know, they're dead now. So that's cool for me. And thank Vishnu, we find it. The navigational computer part, whatever it's called, who cares? Sick. Let's just head back to the boat and install it. To do this, we need to go down into the basement. Oh shit, this room is full of monsters. Yeah, so we need to go through the basement in order to install this computer part, but it's full of demons. Funny enough, when I was making notes on my phone while playing this game, the voice to text put it in as house of whores and not house of horrors. 
Oh wait, I guess my phone was right. So it turns out this terrified woman in the corner of the map is the girlfriend of some guy that works on the ship. And cleaning out the monsters from under our bed is great, but we're not able to install this part because the computer we need to install it into is behind a door that needs a fob to open it. For anyone who doesn't know, a fob is a key, but a key starts like a Honda and a fob starts a fancy car. I don't know, a Ferrari or something. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. But back to this lady. It turns out saving her from aliens is a big win for the hipster boat people. For real, everyone on this ship is like an artist or something. The lore behind it is that they wanted to make San Francisco a culturally artsy place again. That's why they came here. But all this means is that every NPC you talk to on this boat wants to tell you about their cool band. But now that these two are a happy couple again, the captain finally talks to us. Really the only thing he tells us is we need to get the ship running which yeah, I'm already aware and I'm balls deep into that, but he tells us why. I guess there's an oil rig that our tribe is likely being held on right offshore. Okay, cool, but what about the fob? Well, he has some info on that as well. He tells us that fobs are enclave tech and damn it, He's probably right. See, when I raided the base before, I hit everything except this one room because they wouldn't let me in and I didn't feel like fighting them. So I have a hunch it's probably in this room and back to Navarro we go. I suggest you leave this installation immediately and do not return here without proper authorization. Yeah, I can't get back in because I don't have the password anymore. But I did find this air vent that I can crawl through and this was a little worrisome because I figured everybody would aggro on me as soon as they saw me in their base, considering I crawled through a vent. But no one cares. Awesome. So now I just lie to this guy and tell him I'm part of the cleaning crew, I guess. And we're in. There's a few containers in here, but this one's the only one that is locked. So of course it's probably in here. So I'll just lock pick it and, oh shit, they caught me. One more time, I'll just stick my lock pick, oh f they caught me again. Yeah, what the hell? Every time I pick this, the general or whatever this guy is gets super pissed. At this point, I'm kind of done with it. I tried about a dozen times before I just resorted to just killing him. I was hesitant to do so at first since the last time I got my ass kicked here, but I forgot that I recently got power armor and an energy weapon. So killing him was super easy and yeah, the fob's right here just like I thought it was. This is my first time fighting since my new equipment and I'm pretty much God now. I just kind of wiped any Anybody who walked up to me. I left the facility through the same vents I came in and headed back to San Francisco where I installed the computer part. And finally, the ship has been started. After pressing go, we get the longest cutscene we've gotten so far. I'm sure for the 90s this was like epic, but watching it in 2023, it's pretty mid. I don't know, I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not overall too impressed. But at the end of this, we're dropped into the last location of the game. This place is like the future episode from Spongebob. Everything is shiny, and I feel like I'm in the future. But it, this place also sucks. Unfortunately, much like the last game, I have to go in alone. Because if I have my companions, the turrets around the facility aggro on me. But once I'm alone, they don't care. And good news, our tribe is being held captive here. And in their own backwoods hillbilly ass way, You must destroy the machine and kill the devils in this place. They tell us we need to cut the power to the oil rig so they can escape. To do this, we have to go through this awful puzzle room. Why, if you were designing an oil rig, would you put this room in it? It serves no purpose. It's a dumb thing to have. And for some reason, the floor shocks me like every 10 seconds and I wasted so many stim packs getting through this. On the next floor, we find the president of the United States, I guess. And despite me just being some random soldier for his army, he tells us his entire master plan. He wants to kill all mutants, which pretty much means all people that were exposed to radiation. Yeah, no, that, that sounds like the American government, all right. Now, this president has a passcode on him that will give us access to the computer system, which is something we'll probably need. The problem is we can't steal it from him. The only way we can get this is by killing him. We need to kill the president. Yeah, I'm probably on some sort of list now for having said that. But it's a video game. Calm down, FBI. Luckily, we can talk to this scientist right down the hall, and we can convince him that he's evil. And because of this, he floods the rig with toxic gas, killing everybody who's not wearing power armor. Perfect. I'll just wait 30 minutes. No, that doesn't work. Why? 
Everyone else dies, but the president is still here. And for the first time in this game, it looks like I'm forced to fight. I have no other options. As soon as you attack the president, a whole army of soldiers dogpiles you. I died multiple times trying to kill him and his whole entourage, but the best answer was to just run away. If you kill the president and run down these stairs real quick, everyone on that floor just completely forgets that you just assassinated the president. So yeah, we cheesed this, cause why not, I'm lazy. After this, we disable the power plant and we get bonus points for doing so by accidentally setting off the dynamite while it's still in our hand. Praise be to power armor, otherwise I would have died. Destroying the plant, we now only have 10 minutes to make it off the oil rig before the entire thing just explodes. After that, we just try to leave and oh shit, of course, it's this guy. This huge mutated suit of power armor that we've been seeing throughout the game has a name, Frank Horrigan which I don't think is a great final boss name, right? It sounds too normal, I guess. It's like naming a cat Paul. What a ridiculous name for a cat, Paul! He wants you dead and there's no way out of this. He absolutely mopped me a few times before I made two key changes. I convinced the Enclave soldiers to go AWOL and attack their boss with me, and I used the president's keycard to turn the turrets surrounding us against him. Yeah, he got shredded after this. I'm not even sure if I did any damage to him on my own. And my companions just sort of hung out while the turrets in the Enclave made light work of Frank. And now that he's dead, the game's finally done. Okay, so summary. Like the first game, we get a Ron Perlman cutscene that sums up the futures of each settlement and faction we ran into during the game. To the Enclave's destruction, the refugees of Arroyo and Vault 13 resettled. I'm sure this video is obnoxiously long at this point, but this summary is actually pretty quick because it sounds like after the story ends, the NCR pretty much just takes over everything. That and a magical vine starts growing in San Francisco. Though this vine could not grow in other soils, the she took care to nourish it in their lands. Or something like that, I don't know. As for the Chosen One, we use the Gek to create a new settlement with our tribes people and the other prisoners we freed on the oil rig. This is a happy ending, and it's even more so a happy ending because me and all my companions made it out alive. Wait a minute, where is my dog? Oh shit, I'm pretty sure I forgot to tell my dog to follow me again, which means that my dog definitely died in that oil rig explosion at the end of the game. Oh man. But if you're looking for the Chosen One after they conquered the Enclave, you won't find me in the thriving new settlement we founded, because I moved back to New Reno, and I continued my career at the Golden Globes where I get paid to suck dick. If you would like to subscribe to channels on YouTube, then make sure to watch this video all the way to the end. Wow, what a great video. <laughs>